I am an adventure travel photojournalist and I am a woman of many hats, sort of the Indiana Jones of travel photography. So I do all kinds of things from giant art pieces, travel fine art, stock photography, weddings and events, but I always, in whatever genre I do, I specialize in travel. Welcome back to Journeys. I'm Rui Israel, and in this episode of Journey Photography, we're going to meet and travel with Laura Greer, a skilled and passionate photojournalist who has an eye and a heart for unusual cultures and unique places. Let's go meet Laura. I wish I could say I knew my whole life and was traveling with a camera, but it wasn't really like that. My parents both worked for the CIA, and so when we were growing up, we were traveling all over the world and stationed around the world. And I actually spent the first four years of my life living in Jakarta, Indonesia. And I think just travel was always embedded in my culture of my family. I knew I wanted to do something involving travel. Like I, I wanted to be Indiana Jones or Jacques Cousteau, which in my brain was what an archaeologist or a marine biologist does. They're just out exploring, discovering lost temples, whatever it is. And my mom was like, I think you should research these jobs and see that most of them at, are, are not as adventurous as you think, or they're, you're spending time in a lab. She's like, I don't really see you being trapped in one place. So maybe you could be like the photographer or the film crew that follows them around. And that was a conversation I had with my mom when I was about 13. And that was the aha moment for me of like, wait, never even thought about that. It was really good advice at the time when my mom told me that. I thought she was kind of like crushing my dreams. I'm like, thanks mom, you told me I can't like follow my dreams and be an archaeologist. But she was absolutely right. And I think I've always thought of photography as a tool for adventure and travel. And then I fell in love with it when I actually studied it in college. So in college, I was really, really inspired by David LaChapelle, the fashion photographer vibrant color. He built these elaborate sets. Even when I was shooting film, I, I was cross-processing film and doing things to make the color just go wonky. And um, even to this day, my style is vibrant color. So I think I was always inspired by that. And I just thought I was going to be a fashion photographer because when you go to school, that's sort of, that, at least at the time in the 90s, that was like the pinnacle for a photographer to be a fashion photographer. As I started interning and doing other things and experiencing types of photography, I would realize, oh, this isn't really what I thought it was going to be. Or, oh, I don't really like it that much. And so there were some low points of being like, oh man, I thought I wanted to be a fashion photographer, but now I don't really want to do that. So I would say that was my first biggest challenge. I mean, even just coming out to Los Angeles and I finally got here and like drove out in my car and had no money and all my stuff packed up with me. I remember coming to this exact beach where we're at now and just, I had made it to 3000 miles and I'm like, now what? <laughs> Man, so I've been really lucky to work with National Geographic's Artisan Catalog for the last 12, 13 years. One of the guys in my soccer team was working for the National, with the CEO of the Artisan Catalog. And suddenly when their photographers couldn't make it and he asked me last minute to go to Peru. And I was like, yes, I'm on a plane, like send me there. And that was my first job was shooting with them where I have to shoot uh, a lot of their artisans around the world. So National Geographic represents artisans around the world that are doing what they call vanishing crafts. So like the Long Neck Tribe in Burma, or like an ancient flute maker in Bali, or in my case, the Quechua women in Peru that do special weavings, and they want to give them a global marketplace to sell their goods, so if they have a place to earn money, then they'll continue doing these vanishing crafts. And so I did both sides of it. I would shoot the fashion catalog of the models wearing the artisan goods, and then I would actually get to go and do homestays with some of the artisans and photograph them and their families and their, their craft and what they're doing. And that opened up a whole world for me in photography. I feel like I get paid in emotional currency working with them because they've given me this, like, a portal to these places that you wouldn't normally have access to and made me realize there's a much larger world out there. And that was how I happened upon these Quechua women in Peru. I, one of the hats I'm wearing right now is they're all made by Quechua artisans in Peru and I was there hiking with my girlfriend. I stayed longer after one of my photo shoots and we were hiking the Rainbow Mountains and you know I kept on like walking through these villages in the high Andes with these amazing people wearing these hats and like every village is a different hat. Like one village has a top hat and one has like a giant, looks like a, like a lampshade, you know, like they're all totally different. And I kept on photographing the hats and the, our guide was like, oh your girlfriend is like obsessed with these hats and she's like, you don't understand. She's like the Indiana Jones photography and I was like more like Indiana Jones and she just looked at me like rolled her eyes and then we both were like wait a minute that'd be a great name for a hat company so 
But then we spent the whole rest of the hike, low oxygen, everything being like, wait, we could actually make this work. Like you live in Peru, I live here. I, we have access to the artisans through that geo. Like we, we could like sell the hats and you know make more income opportunities for the women. I was like, wait, this is brilliant. And that was like the aha moment for us to do it. And it was weird because I had the tools to do that for the last 12 years. Like I had access to artisans and all that, but I think I'd finally reached a point in my life where I was like, how could I use my tools to do more and do something bigger than myself and like just not think about earning money for myself. So yeah, that's how the hats began, but it was all like literally all of my passions and all the moments in my life sort of built up to that aha moment. I would say the future that I see, it's funny because like different stages in my life, I would say my 20s was like hustling and not being a starving artist, right? And the 30s, I was like, okay, I'm making money, but like now I want to build a name in this industry. And then when I hit 40, I had this series of things happen to me. Like I had to get knee surgery and I couldn't travel for six weeks. And like all these things happened. I had a moment to sit and reflect on my life and I was like, what do I want my 40s to be about? And I thought of the word intention, which is before I even came up with the intention bands and the hats. These are all woven meanings in Quechua that have different intentions. So the Inca people have a woven and an oral language. It's not a written language. So when I came up with the idea for intention in my 40s, I feel like everything started rolling. It was like, you know, the hats all of a sudden had intentions and everything I did, even my photo workshops, I would build in an intentional like, oh, you're going to sponsor an orphan, you know, when you go in this workshop or like whatever it was, I wanted it to be intentional. And so I think for me on the horizon, Using all the skill sets and all the connection I've, I've built in my 20 years of being a professional photographer, use it for good and make it very intentional. Like every trip I go on is gonna be very intentional where I go, who I spend my time with, what jobs I do. And I think that for me on the horizon, I'd love to explore some of these vanishing cultures and arts and photograph them. And I hope that people will care more about where things come from and where they're traveling to and who they're affecting, even just all of us can do something a little more intentional. So I think that's that would be my message and that's what I see on the horizon. Well, all of us at Sammy's Camera thank Laura for sharing her journey with us. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and stay tuned for the next episode of Journeys in Photography.